joining us today for another episode of What's Your Why Wednesday. Today, I am joined by Stephanie Hodge. She is the closing director at EPM. First off, Stephanie, thank you so much for joining us today. And we're so excited to hear all about your why. All right. Most of us come into our industry by accident, but we stay in the industry because it's tied to our personal and professional why. So Stephanie, please share with us, what's your why? Well, you know, uh, after thinking about it, I had decided I didn't have a why yet, but after talking to someone you know very well last night for quite a bit on the phone, she's trying to get it out of me. And what we realized the biggest correlation between personal and business is I have to be challenged. Ah. So I, mean, I love to challenge myself and can never be bored. So, and she found that out by my personal life. You know, I've had all these ups and downs and uh, school dropping out early. And, and the biggest thing she brought up was pool. I started playing pool recently right. and I have connected with it. She is so smart. She says, doesn't that just sound like your work life? And I was like, yeah. So when you start, you start at the beginning. You start at the very bottom. Everyone looks at you like, oh, she's just starting. Oh, we're going to whoop her. She just doesn't even know what she's doing. So I've been playing for a year and a half now and went from a one, they kind of leveled you with numbers. And in a year and a half, I'm a four. So wow. I challenged myself and kept working at it. I practiced, I practiced, I did lots of tournaments over the last year. And it went from something I didn't take very seriously to something I'm like diving all in. I'm going to a tournament this weekend, a woman's tournament four hours away with a hundred dollar entry fee because I'm challenging myself to do better. And every step that I, you know, gain in the pool tournaments or the pool community, it just makes me feel like I'm achieving something. So I just want more. Like I'm not stopping at a four. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going because it's exciting to be challenged. So then with my professional life, the whole story that you already know, and then I explained to her about starting at an attorney's office, you know, and then getting a job at a mortgage company, starting at the bottom, doing post-closing work, just, you know, insuring. Then it moved up to closing. And then I was so determined to move up again. I wanted to learn everything. So I started learning underwriting. I started learning disclosure and I started learning all the departments. And then I became manager. Well, you know, then I was manager and now that wasn't enough for me either. So I started diving into more projects, learning new things. And now I'm a director and I'm not done here either. So I'm not done in my professional life and I'm not done in pool. I just need to, I just keep looking forward and wanting to go up and achieving more because if I don't, that's when I left and went to EPM. I was bored. I was so bored. I'm like, I'm not being challenged anymore. So I left. If pool gets to the point where I'm like, Meh. if I didn't get any better, I would have quit. Because if you're not getting better at something, what's the point in doing it? I, I love that. And the whole time that you're speaking, I'm thinking about the words that are above my head of my philosophy about saying yes every day. Because what you just said, that's the whole premise. The whole premise is not to live life repeating the same thing over and over again. Life is boring when you just do the same thing over and over. You need to open yourself up and you need to challenge yourself to be saying yes to whatever life brings you. So Stephanie, I love the fact that you have realized because just like you just said, you had a conversation with someone because sometimes we need another perspective. Sometimes we need someone else to say, hey, do you realize why you're doing this? Or do you realize how good you are at that? And that's a beautiful thing. That's wonderful to, to allow yourself to be vulnerable, to ask those questions, but then also realize, and that's why when you said to me, well, Laura, I haven't really figured out my why. That's not accurate. You may not have been aware of it, but you have it and you have it very well. And I congratulate you for fine continuing. Pool isn't the end, 
you know, you'll master pool and then you'll move on to the next thing and then you'll master that and then the next thing. And whether it's professional or in business, you will continue to move forward. And that is phenomenal. All right. So thank you. That was great. Next question. And this, this is my, my favorite question because I love our industry and I love how many people we affect, you know, in a positive way. And I, I really get a joy out of hearing people share a story about when they realize how much of a difference they make, whether it's the lives of a team member, the lives of a client, the lives of a family they work directly with. Tell me a story of when you realize that impact that you have on others. I don't think there's a specific story that made me realize it, but I know that, and I've talked to you about this, about the hardships I've had in the mortgage business with my managers or my direct, you know, leaders and stuff. So it kind of goes with your next question. So I'm not going to skip to it. Yeah, but, don't skip. <laughs> but when I learned everything I did, uh, we had a team at my last job and I had a bad attitude. Like I just, I don't know, maybe I just hadn't grown up enough yet. But when I saw one of my employees start treating other people the way I was treating other people, uh. it, you don't see it when you do it, but you see it when someone, other, someone else does it. So I took her out to lunch and I started discussing with her, hey, you know we're a lot alike. We've known each other for years. And I just want to thank you because, and it was funny, I actually thanked her for treating this person the way she did because it made me realize who I was and what I've been doing. That lunch that we had together wasn't important maybe to other people, but it was me. And it was mm -hmm. a turning point. After that day, my attitude became so positive on a daily basis uh, because there's just no need to be negative. So just watching an employee be so negative just turned my life around. So guess what? Turned her life around. Wow. We ended up, being, we're still best friends today. So I think that watching and realizing how I was treating people and then changing also helped my employees then and current employees because they'll never have to have, you know, negative attitudes, right? I just promote positivity with whatever group I'm working in. And I owe it all to just that one day. It's very weird that you can pinpoint. Wow. Isn't note, that something? Like, yeah, like who knew I was that rude or negative? Like little short answers on an email. Right. Watching someone else do it. I will never write a no, yeah. Right. Why are you doing that? Why would you say, I would never write an email like that before. But if I could just print all the emails I did prior to then, I probably would be seeing some things I'd be ashamed of. So I really thankful for that one moment and I'll always remember it. So let me ask you a follow-up question to that. So what do you give as a piece of advice to others? Because like, and, and who knows what, how the stars aligned that day, that it kind of clicked with you and you made that pivotal change. Sometimes like what you said, sometimes we don't see it because it's who we are and it's the way we've been doing it over and over again. And even if someone tells us, we kind of say, nope, 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 I'm not doing that. <laughs> nope, that's not me. You must be speaking about someone else. So how do you make yourself that self-aware? or What's the recommendation there? Well, after that, I know I just said promote positivity, but when I meet people, I literally have a conversation with them about what I had used to do and how I see a lot of myself mm -hmm. in them because I really want to help them. I mean, we just had another person, all caps, not even a week ago. <laughs> and I had a meeting with her and I said, look, I know what you're going through. Like I get frustrated too, but you have to think that that other person is going through something. So yeah. you just did all caps and you have no clue what that person might be going through that day. You could have just made that person quit her job. You do not yeah. need to be responsible for making other people feel a certain way just because you're frustrated. So you have to make sure that if you're frustrated, I got that backspace method I, I teach people, you know, type out the email, backspace it. Or <laughs> send your email to yourself, to your personal email. So I have little things I tell people all the time on how to be more positive and not try and, you know, shove your your feelings onto other people in the mortgage it, business. That is, is not so the right place to do it. It is so true. I mean, I literally had the exact conversation with someone yesterday where I said, 
you need to read your email back. Like, like stop, read it, like, and think of the tone of how that is as you're reading it. And like you said, maybe you need to delete some sections or maybe you need to start again, but take a moment to reread it before you hit that send button. Because like you said, you can't take it back. Once it's out there, it's out there. And we all, we know our industry certainly is full of emotion and full of stress. And we, we certainly can appreciate how each other is feeling. So you do have to take that extra time. I love it. Self-reflection, that emailing to yourself, just so you yeah. know, is not actually a bad idea. When you read, when you receive your own email, and it sounds like that, that's a really quick learner for some people once they actually receive their own email and read it. Because you got to think about all those people reading that stuff. You do not need to do that. So I completely stopped that years ago. And I love it. I can't believe things I would write back in the day. (laughs) But you've learned and you've grown. And that's the beauty of it. And we all have that opportunity. Just like like challenging yourself and learning new things. Also challenging yourself to be aware of yourself and others. And and I really love what you said, Stephanie, when you said you don't know what other people are going through or what's happening in their life. We all know everyone has a weight on their shoulders from one way or another. We all know that. That's just life. So take a moment to remember that. How do you want to affect that person's life today? Do you want to affect them positively? Or do you want it, like you said, someone could say, that's it, I'm done. Like, I can't take another email like that. And it wasn't that your email was that bad. It's just your email compounded on top of other things. And that was the breaking point. So yes, it's very good. We all have to be mindful. All right, so my last question, you have been phenomenal. And I really, this has been a great self-reflection. So I love this. So How do you want to be described in the industry? How do you want to be remembered in the mortgage industry? Tell us that. So it's kind of a two part because I know my real answer is a teacher. Like that's the industry legacy kind of thing. Like, oh, do you remember Stephanie? Oh, she was the one, you know, oh, how'd you learn that? Oh, it was Stephanie. Oh, where'd y'all learn that? Stephanie. Like, (laughs) I want to make sure that anything I know I spread that knowledge to everybody. I learn with people, you know, like I don't want to be just teaching. I I love learning new things with people, but I really like the fact that I like to teach people too. And I I want the second part kind of goes with this is that I always said I was never going to be like any manager that I've ever had growing up. And I believe I've accomplished that. I work really hard to not make any any of my coworkers or employees ever feel that they're not important, not listened to. I never downgrade them. I would never cuss them out. Like all the things that I've been through, my whole goal in life is to always be the manager that I wish I had. So having conversations with um, people, you know, that I manage to hear them say, like truthfully, like you could tell that they respect me. And we talk all the time, like all anyone I've ever managed. I can remember every single name. I can remember their kids' names, you know, what their interests are. Um, and I listen to everything they say, because when you're an employee and you're talking to a manager, you know, I've got, it feels for them to listen to you, not make you feel like you're stupid and actually value what you say. So not only do I want to teach people, I wish I could like people that are under me right now that want to be managers. I want to teach them this is the kind of manager you need to be. Don't be like someone else just because that'll get you farther. Like you don't need to be cutthroat and rude and all those things to get somewhere. Look, I'm very nice. When I keep saying that positive thing, like people hate it, like promote positivity, I really do it. So just work on it and make sure people respect you and know that you're a genuine person because that's the way you should manage. I agree. And, And you said something very important there. Through our careers, you're correct. You will have some people that did things the wrong way. And if you're blessed and lucky, you will come across the manager and the leader that you really respect and and treat you very well. Both of those will teach you something, whether it's the bad one or the really great one. And you should always learn from every experience. Even a bad one teaches you a lesson 
It teaches you how not to be. It teaches you how much you value the importance of someone appreciating you or someone caring and guiding you. So absolutely, we learn from both sides. And I love that. Again, that's self-awareness and self-reflection because you have to continually be scanning and looking for that and then taking it and applying it to yourself. So great job. And Stephanie, I can tell you've come through a, a, a metamorphosis, so to speak, right? It almost seems like you've gone through this, this change and you've really learned and are self-aware. And congratulations, because there's people that never go through that in their life. So, so that is phenomenal. All right. Well, you have been amazing. We truly appreciate you sharing your why and all of your insights with us. And we wish you all the best always. Thank you so much.